So let's begin. Again, my name is Mike Cooney with Enterprise Florida. Uh, this is uh, something we've been looking forward to, doing our webinar with our partners at uh, MASC. And uh, we are eager to share the information that I will be sharing this morning. And we'll go through this uh, in a reasonable pace, uh, but uh, at some point, We'll take some additional questions and answers, or I'll respond to those if I see a particular theme. And otherwise, um, otherwise, uh, as I say, we will go from there. I see some people uh, asking questions. Everyone is muted. Uh, I'm the only speaker. Sorry about that. Uh, but that way, we won't be tripping on top of each other with questions. Instead, post your questions in the chat area. And by scrolling down toward the bottom of the page, you'll see a little icon that you can click on and then post your questions there. So let's begin. Um, my able-bodied assistants and team members in Orlando are going to be supporting me. So for that, I'm grateful. I'm actually attending a aviation trade show in Fort Lauderdale. So I feel like I'm some sort of a radio MC here doing it remotely. Uh, Christian, if you'd please advance to the next slide. So Enterprise Florida, and many of you probably have heard of us, but maybe some not, is a public-private partnership that was established quite a number of years ago for the purpose of being able to create jobs and investment throughout the state of Florida. There are two primary areas of responsibility. One is the business development side. That team is responsible for helping to attract companies to the Florida area, to the state of Florida. And of course, we work very closely with our partners around the state, uh, including the Economic Development uh, Council or Economic Development Commission, sorry, of uh, Florida Space Coast, as well as uh, MASC. So we have these partnerships throughout the state, whether they be economic development organizations, government agencies, chambers of commerce, universities, and others. So we do that in partnership, again, for the purpose of being able to increase jobs and investment on the trade side, which I'm responsible for, along with a number of colleagues throughout the state, we help companies to find export opportunities for their products. And we typically are working with companies that are already export ready. That is to say, they've either been exporting or they're very close to exporting. And I'll get into some of the details on that a little bit later. If a company has never exported, then we generally assist them with information and connect them with the Small Business Development Center in order to uh, at least begin that process of getting more export ready. And in our particular area, that being Central Florida, uh, we have the Central Florida International Trade Council located in Orlando. My good friend Chris Leggett is also participating in this. So Chris, I know, would be glad to help anyone as well, especially if they're new to exporting or want to get into exporting. Next slide, please. So we do this in a variety of ways. As you can see here, uh, we do the statewide trade development, as I've already mentioned. Um, we then assist companies to identify international clients and to diversify their markets. We also market the state's business advantages, and we also have international representation around the world. And I'll be talking more about that, too, with respect to our offices that Enterprise Florida has around the world, plus other partners uh, such as the U.S. Commercial Service and their respective areas in uh, embassies and countries all over the globe. Next. Here you can see the latest uh, Florida export scorecard, as it's called. Uh, you can take a look here that these are the total merchandise trade for Florida origin exports. And you can see for yourself how they were uh, back in 2011 at 149 and, and then uh, dipped a bit in 2016, now headed back up again. However, we would expect probably that number to go down based on the tariffs, but since it lags about a year, we won't know that with any certainty until the numbers come out for uh, 2019. But as you can see, Florida is a very robust state when it comes to exports, not only to the Caribbean, but around the world. 
In addition, as we uh, talked yesterday on a team meeting, uh, it's almost impossible for Florida to uh, go up against states like Washington State with Boeing, with uh, Michigan and the car industry, or any of the uh, oil exporters such as Texas and Louisiana. So they, they will always have, for the most part, large numbers compared to ours. However, as uh, is stated there, we are still a very healthy state and are considered the eighth largest in the U.S. when it comes to exports. Next. No one has to take notes. If you're uh, an overachiever, I understand. I would probably be taking notes myself, but uh, you will be getting a copy of this as well as this is being recorded. So you can take a look at the key target markets worldwide from Florida. Uh, no big surprise, uh, Central and South America, of course, are, are very large. Uh, but then looking at, at Europe, the Far East, and Africa, and the Middle East, uh, those also are significant markets for Florida exporters. Also, I'll mention anyone who's on the line, if you didn't hear me, you can uh, scroll down toward the bottom of the page and you'll see a little icon that uh, you can then click on and post questions in the chat area and they will be responded to uh, in real time. Next slide, please. So how do we do it? We have a number of offices around the state. Each office is responsible for a certain region. In my case, I'm in the Orlando office and I'm responsible for 10 counties, including Brevard County. So I am your main point of contact. At any point you can contact me. I'll have uh, my information at the end of the slide, uh, both email, uh, the phone number, and just contact me at any point. If you have a specific need that might be better handled by one of my colleagues in a different area, then I will put you directly in touch with them. But for the most part, I'll be able to help you with uh, any of your export questions or point you in the right direction where you can get that information. Export counseling is something that we do for free. As I mentioned earlier, we primarily are working with companies that are export ready. If you've never exported, then there are resources that can help you do so. And when you're export ready, then we're more than happy to assist. But again, these services are available at free of charge to any company in Florida and specifically in the Central Florida region where I would be your my primary point of contact. Export financing is available. There's a, a few sources for that, albeit still not an easy situation. I was contacted by someone just the other day that is looking for um, money for a startup. Uh, that's a very, very difficult uh, opportunity to try to finance, but uh, certainly those companies that have a, a strong uh, P&L as well as balance sheets, certainly they have access to a variety of financing that we can help them with. And then as you'll see, we have uh, a number of offices out and across uh, the globe. And these are companies that we contract with to provide these services. They've been primarily been working on the business development side, that is Florida direct, excuse me, foreign direct investment, which are companies in other countries that want to set up an operation somewhere in Florida. Uh, going forward, we're actually going to be working with those some of those locations more uh, directly on exporting, and that is using them as a resource for our companies in Florida that are looking for contacts as well as information about specific countries uh, as potential markets. Next slide. And how do we do it? We do it through a number of ways, at least uh, proactively on the part of Enterprise Florida. We attend a number of trade shows. I myself am responsible for aviation, aerospace, and defense statewide. And as a result, I'm responsible for putting together four Florida pavilions at four major air shows around the world. Foreign Borough was last July, and that's just outside of London. I am preparing now uh, for the Florida Pavilion at the Paris Air Show, which is this coming June, followed by the Dubai Air Show in November. And next comes Singapore, February 2020, and then we're back to Foreign Borough. And the way it works is that we, because we've been doing this so long as an organization, 
we're able to essentially buy raw space and then use a stand builder to outfit it to our specs. And then we offer space in different square meter configurations to companies who want to exhibit. So as you can see, there's a photograph of one of the uh, trade shows that we participate in. This one is Medica. Uh, my colleague, Mike Schiffauer, handles life sciences. Another colleague handles the marine industry and so on. And we'll see more of that in a few minutes. Uh, as I have learned in doing this myself, as well as participating in Medica, back uh, in November with Mike Schiffauer, there are countries that wish they had an exhibit space like ours, and that is not an exaggeration. So for example, at Medica, Mike had upwards of uh, 24 companies. At Paris, I will have 11 companies, all Florida-based companies that are interested in selling and exporting their services and products. Trade missions is another popular uh, area and a way that we're able to help companies get into various markets. So, for example, last year we had trade missions to the Dominican Republic, as well as one that uh, was back-to-back -back within the same week to Tanzania and Kenya. Uh, coming up is a trade mission to Morocco, followed by a trade mission to Vietnam. And by the way, Morocco is in April, and uh, Vietnam is in late May, early June, if I recall correctly. And in addition, we are preparing for one that will be coming up uh, that's going to Colombia. So keeping those in mind, they're a wonderful opportunity for companies to participate in a Florida delegation. As you can imagine, when we put these together, it is uh, a lot of doors are open because my colleagues responsible for those trade missions work with the U.S. Commercial Service within those respective locations, and in doing so are able to utilize uh, the services of the U.S. Commercial Service uh, for being able to set up appointments. And in fact, uh, in addition, uh, that is included in the registration fee to participate is what we call a gold key service. And I'll talk more about that in just a moment. Uh, the, the participation fee is, is quite reasonable. Uh, certainly, if you were to go and do something of this sort on your own, it would be a lot more expensive. And in most cases, you would not be able to get in to see as many of the um, organizations or make contacts uh, as, as you would by participating in one of our, our trade missions. So another great opportunity, the uh, registration fee does not include the travel or hotel, all of that is extra. But again, it's an amazing opportunity to be able to uh, get into new markets, especially markets that perhaps uh, you've been thinking about or believe might be a good market, but yet haven't uh, quite taken the leap to get more involved. Next slide. Here are key target sectors. I mentioned aviation, aerospace, uh, and defense. That's my target area. And then we have clean technologies, defense and homeland security, information technologies, and so on. So we have areas that our staff specialize in and are responsible for. As I mentioned, if you contact me as your local contact in the 10 County Central Florida area, and you wanted to attend a marine trade show, I would put you in touch with my colleague in the Jacksonville office because he handles uh, the marine industry. If you're a medical-related company, then I would put you in touch with my colleague, Mike Schiffauer, who handles life sciences and so on. Next slide, please. The target sector trade grants, we have uh, quite a number of them, and specifically for trade shows. So altogether we have five grants, and I'll be going through each of them. Uh, again, for anyone who may have just joined us, this presentation will be available uh, so that you do not have to take notes unless you want to. Also, if you've joined us recently, you can scroll down toward the bottom of your screen. You'll see a little chat bubble. You can click on that and post your questions in the chat area, and then we'll have someone responding to those in real time. 
So the trade show grant is, is a wonderful opportunity for small to medium-sized companies that uh, have been thinking about attending an international trade show, but for usually cost reasons, uh, just aren't able to do so. So as you can see, we have an option A and an option B. The option A is for virtually any company that fits one of our primary sectors, has 500 employees or less, and the company can receive a reimbursement of 75% up to $7,500. And that is strictly for the trade show booth itself. That does not include any of the travel or uh, per diem costs for actually attending the show. But I would say nearly every company that is able to take advantage of one of our grants says that but for this grant, they would not be participating in that show. So it does help to offset the costs uh, dramatically in most cases, and again, is an opportunity to get involved in trade shows around the world that otherwise would not uh, perhaps be possible. We have, as I mentioned, our Florida pavilions, and if we have space in a Florida pavilion, then the company is required to be in that space. If, on the other hand, we're sold out, as I currently am with the Paris Air Show, then a company can still uh, apply for the grant and receive the grant, and we would then put them in touch with uh, the show, uh, the U.S. pavilion organizer, uh, in this case, a company called Coleman. So just because we have a Florida pavilion and we're sold out doesn't mean people still can't take advantage of the trade show grant. In addition, if... Um, a company uh, is is looking to go to any trade show that makes sense and uh, again supports one of our key sectors they can also apply uh, some companies think that they can only apply for the grant if we have a florida pavilion there and that simply is not correct as well there's an option b as you will see and you can read for yourself a company with 100 employees or less and is looking to go into one of the target markets, Africa, Asia, Australia, New Zealand, Mexico, or the Middle East, then you can qualify for 100% up to $10,000. Again, for a small to medium-sized company, in this case mostly small, you can see that that could be a, a huge advantage uh, for companies to be able to get into markets. We just had, for example, a very small aerospace company located uh, in Kissimmee that participated in Avalon, which is a show every two years in Australia. If it hadn't been for this grant, they would probably not have been able to participate. Next show, next slide, please. The gold key I had alluded to earlier, as I mentioned, this is part of the um, the fee to participate in one of our trade missions. Essentially, what it provides is an opportunity to have pre-qualified appointments set for the ideal buyer, agent, distributor, representative, whatever the criteria may be. Essentially, what we would do is if someone is interested in doing a cold key on their own, which is highly possible, or if they're part of a trade mission, we then would put them in direct contact and help facilitate the contact between the local U.S. commercial service representative, which is part of the U.S. Department of Commerce, and the U.S. commercial service in the destination. There would be a phone conversation. There would be a questionnaire completed. If the U.S. commercial service in the destination believes that they can help them in setting up these meetings, then the um, U.S. Commercial Service would go forward. They generally like a, a minimum of eight-week lead time so that when you do finally wind up in that destination, you have anywhere from three to five pre-qualified meetings already set up. So as a, as a result, again, this is something that would be very, very difficult to do on your own, but through this grant, uh, that, again, is a huge advantage. These are one-on-one -on -one meetings. They're generally at a place that's convenient uh, to have the meeting held, maybe at a hotel. If it's determined that that's a good fit, then there's the opportunity to perhaps visit that location uh, or that company the following day or days that follow. This, like all of our grants, is reimbursable, meaning that you would actually pay the fee to the U.S. Commercial Service, you would then go and participate in the Gold Key, and when you return, we have minimal paperwork that would be completed and submitted, 
and then we would reimburse the company for that cost, which could be anywhere from 950 to 1500 depending on how complex the situation is in that location for setting up those kinds of appointments. Going back to the, uh, the trade grant, again, that's reimbursable. You essentially have to pay for everything. And then when you return, we then uh, request, again, minimal paperwork. You submit an invoice, and we then uh, provide a, a check within uh, somewhere around two weeks or less. Next slide, please. I'll stop again for anybody that may have just joined us or came in late, um, and it looks like we have quite a few folks on the line now. So we appreciate your participation. I'm Mike Cooney with Enterprise Florida, and I'm responsible for the 10-county region, which includes Brevard County. In addition, as I mentioned uh, now several times, if you scroll down toward the bottom, you'll be able to uh, see a little icon uh, for a chat. Uh, you can then, in real time, ask your questions over in the chat box, and they'll be responded uh, as well in real time. And I'll try to go back through it toward the end and, and recap some of them that may uh, be a continuing theme. The Export Marketing Plan is probably one of my favorite grants. It's not for everyone. It's for companies that are export ready, and it essentially provides a roadmap for the future. The cost is $5,000. In fact, if you were to pay a consultant to provide that same report, it could easily cost $30,000. And the reason I know that is because I described this document to a company and they said, oh darn, I just paid $30,000 for that same kind of study. It is done in cooperation with the SBDC, Small Business Development Center. Uh, if, again, the company qualifies for this, uh, there essentially is a, a great deal of, of back and forth and conversations. Someone from the SBDC will visit the site of the company that is going to be receiving the export marketing plan. There's three primary criteria, and these are non-negotiable. The first is that it's a 100% management buy-in. This is not an bottom-up, but a top-down approach. So if management is not 100% behind this, then there's no point in wasting anybody's time and money. Second, that they have money in the bank, so to speak, that can hold them over until such time as the exports start flowing. And I say that because a lot of people seem to think exporting is going to solve all their problems. And in reality, it can take at a minimum of 18 months uh, from when you begin the process of exporting until when you actually receive your first order. And again, that's no by no means a guarantee. It's just sort of an average that we're working with. So in any case, uh, as I say, it, it is one of those things that it takes time and, and people have to be patient. I often say exporting is not for the faint of heart. Uh, it takes real commitment. Uh, there's a lot of front end learning curve that is part of the process. Once that learning curve is understood, things tend to become a little uh, uh, more uh, normal, if you want to call it that, or you have the, the processes in place to be able to make it uh, a, a more of a routine type of a transaction. Uh, but if you've never exported, then it does take some, some real experience and some learning. I often like to say that some companies get into exporting by default. They sell something, somebody in another country sees it, that person contacts them from the other country, says, I like what you have, I want to buy it, and they get into exporting. That's not a strategy. Export Marketing Plan provides that strategy with enormous detail about the markets, competitors, who's buying what, who's selling what. Uh, it's really a remarkable document that, again, uh, is highly beneficial to companies that are export ready and are really ready to take uh, their exporting to the next level. Next slide, please. Website localization grant. This is another one of our grants. We partner with a company in the UK that uh, works with a company in Florida that is eager to get into new markets using 
a new website. So this company will provide two websites in two native languages of two new markets that a company would like to penetrate. Everyone says that, uh, well, English is the, the base language in most cases, and that's not incorrect. But as I like to tell my aviation companies that I work with who always point that out, that aviation, the base language is English, I say, yes, that is absolutely true. However, there are a lot of nuances on the technical side that don't translate well, hence the reason why this is a very, very useful tool. The cost is $12,000. We cover 8,000, so you would receive two websites in two native languages for two, mo two new markets for 2,000 each. Anyone who's ever worked in helping to develop a website knows that that's quite a bargain. Interestingly enough, and this was a question that one of my clients asked, and I didn't know the answer to, I asked uh, the company uh, that actually does this, are they able to produce websites in an English-speaking country? And the answer is yes. So if someone needed a website for a British market or an Australian market or a South African market, even though it's still English, there are a lot of nuances with respect to that language that uh, would uh, be handled through this particular process. As well, the websites themselves are SEO compliant because in various countries, of course, they do searches that are different than our searches. And it's also social media compliant for those that are eager to get involved in Facebook or LinkedIn or whatever it may be. So again, this is not for everyone, but for companies that are really eager to get into new markets, this provides a, a fantastic opportunity uh, to do so. And uh, again, at a cost that's quite reasonable, the contract is for one year and it's renewable. Or if you choose to take your content and go somewhere else, you can do that as well. Next slide, please. International Registration Grant is our newest. And what this does is provide a grant that um, you are able to apply for if you are required to have a registration or certification in a country to do business. As an example, uh, one of the MRO companies, maintenance repair and overhaul companies that works in aviation, I had uh, had a conversation with them at the MRO trade show in Europe in Amsterdam back in October, and they were telling me how they unfortunately were not able to get a contract in Thailand because they didn't have the registration. When I explained that we had this new grant, uh, they're really quite excited because this grant will help them get that certification. In their particular case, it actually requires a uh, audit, that is uh, at least one or two people from Thailand will come over and go through their facility, make sure they are who they say they are, as well as uh, be able to uh, verify that they can perform on the various uh, aspects of, of what their company does. That could cost upwards of $10,000 uh, at least. We'll cover 50% up to $10,000. If it's simply a certification or registration where you have to send them a check, that's also covered. However, again, many times it's a requirement that there's an audit, and we will also handle those. So you can see all the various uh, registrations that various companies and countries rather uh, require, uh, especially in the aviation industry. Uh, it used to be it was pretty much FAA and the European version, now nearly every country has their own certification process. So this is brand new. Uh, we've recently launched it. One other thing I'll mention is that you can receive up to three grants in any fiscal year. Our fiscal year begins July 1 and runs through June 30. So if you've never received a grant, in theory, you could receive three grants up until June 30. Then the clock starts again, and you can receive another three grants come July 1 through the following June 30. This particular grant is not counted in that three, and that may change in due time, but for now, at least, it is uh, not included. So please keep that in mind. 
And when I say you can receive three grants in a fiscal year, it's a mix and match. If you choose to do one trade show, one export marketing plan, and one website localization, that's three grants. If you want to do all three trade shows, that's fine too, again, as long as you qualify. Next slide, please. Here are the offices around the world, and as you can see, uh, they are quite diverse. Uh, we're looking at opening one in the Middle East, perhaps in Dubai, uh, sometime around mid-year, although that's not confirmed yet. That's uh, where we are planning to open our newest office. So again, if you have specific interest in any of these markets, in addition to the services offered by the U.S. Commercial Service, our offices many times can be of help as well. Next slide. Here are the upcoming events. As you can see, and I already mentioned, we have the Mission to Morocco in April, uh, followed by Hospitalar, which is a medical and life sciences trade show in Brazil. Next is the Vietnam Mission, followed by the Paris Air Show, which is uh, what I'm responsible for in putting together the Florida Pavilion. And then next there's another uh, medical show in Thailand, followed by MRO Europe in London. And again, MRO stands for Maintenance, Repair, and Overhaul, which is uh, typical of companies that are supporting various aspects of the industry, uh, aviation industry specifically, and it can be either commercial or defense related. Then the Dubai Air Show I mentioned, and the Columbia Mission in November. Next slide. As I mentioned, we have the trade offices around the state of Florida, and these are my colleagues who all handle various aspects of not only their own region, but as I mentioned, specifically specific industry sectors. So our headquarters is actually in Coral Gables, and we have staff there, uh, but I, along with several colleagues, am based in Orlando. So if there's a specific expertise or, for example, if someone is interested in Africa as a, an export destination, then we would put them in touch with uh, my colleague Joseph Bell, who has uh, that as an area of specialization. And then, as I mentioned, the rest of us all have different market segments as well. Next slide. And that's it for my presentation. I hope I answered uh, or at least covered most everything. As I mentioned, you can uh, make comments in the chat area by simply moving your cursor down and finding that little bubble and then uh, uh, typing in the chat. So if you have any questions, again, this is my contact information. Feel free to reach out to me at any time on my office number, my mobile number, or by sending me an email. Uh, as I've said earlier, this is being recorded, so for anyone who may have missed something, you will be able to go back through it again and listen, as well as uh, anybody who, for example, if you know someone who had planned to attend but couldn't, they'll be able to access it, and I'll be working with Elizabeth Huey to get that uh, link out so that you can listen to this again, if you wish. I just wanted to uh, say very much how much I appreciate it. Um, and one thing I did forget, and that is uh, we have an international newsletter that goes out uh, every other week. And if you would like to sign up for that, again, send me an email and I'll make sure you are on the distribution list. And that particular newsletter is put out with uh, practically every kind of international activity you can think of around the state. If you have an international activity and it qualifies, you can also put that in our newsletter. And again, if you're interested in doing that, let me know and I'll send you the link. And then it can be determined if that would be a good fit or not. If there's nothing else, I'm just looking here at some of the, uh, the comments. I think we've, I guess, either answered everything or I put you to sleep, one or the other. If, again, you have any questions, please send me an email, give me a phone call. I'll be happy to do whatever I can to assist you in being able to find either export opportunities for your products and services or put you in contact with people who can.
I believe that's it for today. We uh, wrapped up early. I had originally thought it might go until 10 o'clock, but I don't think anyone is going to complain if, in fact, uh, we end early, because I know everyone is so busy that it is uh, definitely a, a situation that we can always use more time in our day. So thank you very, very much for your participation, and uh, please contact me if I can be of service in any other way. Thank you very much.